we have to take off guilt, shame, and condemnation. As you all know, we talk about that a lot. <clears throat> but there's a role we have to pay, play. We have to put off the old man, make sure we're not trying to put it. He's already been put off. But we have to make sure we're not trying to put him back. Resurrect the old man, right? You get me? From the, from the dead. And put on the new. But we have to live this out. Does anybody know how we're going to work these truths out? How are we going to do it? What's one of the biggest keys? It's my favorite word. It's my favorite two. Yay! Yay, Sadi. Where are you? There you are. Renewing our minds. Fantastic. Okay. I have something to show you. Okay. Do you see this? Do you see this glass of water? It's like three quarters full, yeah? But guess what? I've got another glass of water and it's nearly empty. Okay, can you see that properly? Okay, so both of these represent minds. Okay, I've explained this to some of you, but you've not seen a visual. This is a mind, this water represents mind, a mind that's renewed. So if a mind is full with truths, okay, or as full as I could get it without risking falling onto my computer right um there's not much room left right and this cup is only partly full with mind and all but there's loads of space left okay the more your mind is renewed is the less room for lies to come in it's the less room for the enemy to trick you because if you're full with the truth of god's word yeah there's no room left okay but if your mind is only partly renewed or just a little bit or even well i doubt for empty right but just a little bit then there's no ever any empty space i believe something's already always filling something right that space is often filled with um being conformed to this world and believing the lies of the enemy so that's well our job is to fill our minds with the truth is to teach our souls the truth of the reality of who we are in christ okay so um the more we renew our minds the more our soul and body comes to know the truth and does anybody know that the truth sets us free the truth set always sets us free um and I've already said about to the degree you knew your mind is the degree you can experience freedom, healing, restoration. But the new man or the new woman, okay, um, has to come out, has to come out from our spirit through to our soul and through to our body. And this is through renewing of the mind. That's how we'll be transformed, okay? All mind renewal, for all mind renewal to be truly effective, and this was a sobering truth for me, um, that we have to begin our mind renewal in who we are in Christ and who Christ is in us. Um, reluctantly, sometimes I've felt like I've majored on renewing the mind about weight loss and food and marriage and all of these things when really I've found time and time and time again as I coach and just in general in life that I've found that majority of the problems come and that means majority of the problems can be fixed because we don't know who we are. Okay. Uh, I kind of feel like a broken record. And so I says, well, I've got this problem. What do you think, what mind renewal book or course do you think I should do? And I'm identity. <laughs> I keep saying identity, like identity, you know, I feel inadequate identity. You know, I look in the mirror and I don't like what I see identity, right? If you look, looked in the mirror and you don't like what you've seen recently, that means that you're not looking at Christ. It's a bold statement. 
if you look in the mirror and you don't like what you see, then who are you looking at? Okay. Because God says that you are a wonderful creation, fearfully and wonderfully made. In fact, when he sees you, I'll say it again, he sees Christ. It's no longer Cindy that lives. It's no longer Luan that lives or Anya or Mary. It's Christ. Okay. All right. So, uh, uh, okay. So I'm going to share some screenshots in a minute. But the more you renew your mind equals the more you'll start to see the new man and others will see in you this new person, this new creation come out. OK, um, you may feel fear, but the reality is, is one example. There's no fear in Christ. You may feel like you have a food, drug or alcohol addiction, but the reality is there are no chains holding Jesus. So there's no chains holding you. I'm, I'm aware that I may be, you may be thinking I'm being ignorant there and you may say, well, Sophia, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> okay. But the Lord said this to me today and I was very shocked. He says that I've come to proclaim Liberty. He's going to proclaim Liberty through me. I was very, very shocked. Luke 4 18 says the spirit of the Lord is on me. <laughs> Because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim deliverance to the captives and recovery and recovery of sight to the blind and to release the oppressed. And uh, yes, okay. Uh, yes, yes, yes. I'm looking at my notes. Yeah. I have found that the more I've renewed my mind in my identity in Christ is that it's got rid of a lot of problems in my life and people who I've watched renew their minds and identity. It's got rid of a whole heap of problems in their life as well. When you discover who you are in Jesus and the love of God that he has for you, you heal your identity and your nature. You heal your identity and your nature. We bridge Jesus as the surgeon. And when you mix that with the word of God, we get freedom. Yeah. Um, I'm sure you've heard of him being the great physician. Physician, that's how we see him, right? Where Christ is, we are free. And we definitely don't want to be slaves, right? We don't want to be slaves to anything. So this teaching coupled with mind renewal is hazardous and it is dangerous okay to a defeated life it's really dangerous what i mean by it being dangerous is when you get this and you mix it with mind renewal and with christ it truly changes everything it changes everything and i wonder how many of us may know these truths but haven't renewed our mind to them. We know them here, but we're not living it here. Yeah. Everything we do now is in the newness of Christ. Okay. We uh, have been delivered from the law. The Bible says that being dead, we were held that we should now, that we should serve in the newness of spirit and not in the oldness of the letter. Okay. So as he is, so are we is that when he returns or as it is we are now you 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 let me know is it are we as he is when he returns the second coming if you believe in that when we get to heaven or is it now thank you cindy mary okay who is christ now who do you think christ is is he so remember as he is so are we now so he's a prince and he's a king he brought the devil to nothing. He disarmed him. As Christ is, so are we. Okay, we are complete in him. So this lady is in a hot air balloon. Yeah, she's high, high, high up, right? And if you've ever been in a hot air balloon, I won't because I'm still renewing my mind on heights, 
okay? <laughs> uh, but I have been in a plane. And the higher up you go, right, the smaller things look down on the earth, right? Mm -hmm. So if you are seeing a situation in your life that is huge or big, it's because you're not, you're not recognizing or you're not positioning yourself in a higher place, in a higher, you're not high enough. Okay. If it's right in your face, it means we need to look up. Yeah. We have not yet taken our total soul and body and spirit into this reality that we are seated in heavenly places. We're going to have to renew our minds on that. Um, and so the higher you go, you can help others better. Because if I'm right there crying with you in despair, I can't help. It's really, it's, I can, but it's hard. If I'm looking at things from a higher perspective, I won't be easily moved. I think that's been one of the biggest things for me. The things that used to bug me and bother me and irritate me or cause me to be offended, it really doesn't now. Okay? Because we want to look at people as Christ sees them. We can't look at people as Christ sees them if we're too busy looking at all their faults. Okay? Can't do it. Problems become nothing. Okay? Nothing that Christ can't handle. And challenges become small. And this is really exciting. This is really, really exciting. So if you're experiencing those things, remember there's no condemnation. I still experience some things as well. And so I'm growing right alongside of everyone. In fact, I don't think I've met anyone that says I'm completely renewed in every area of my life. I asked my husband and he's pretty got his mind renewed and he said, nah, not even me. So, but uh, we, we have experienced a lot of breakthrough. Okay. So uh, John 14 said that, um, that, that he, uh, Christ, he went to the father and completed our redemption to enable us to be justified. So God is a spirit and we are the body. And God is saying, give me your body and I will give you my spirit. Okay. Whatsoever you ask in the name of my father. Yeah, he does. Verse 16 of, uh, of John 4, I think we're on John 14, 10, just drop down the verses says that he will be with us continually. There's no way for us to be lonely. If someone's struggling with loneliness, right? There is no way we can be lonely. If we can recognize that the father the Holy Spirit in Christ resides in us. And we'll talk a lot about being the temple of God in some point in this um, course as well. Okay. So there are three key verses that I, not verses, statements that I want you to write down because we're going to be going on a treasure hunt over the 63 days to find these phrases. They're all over the New Testament. Okay. Okay. A lot of Paul's letters speaks of who we are in Christ Jesus. Okay. Number one, in Christ. Anytime we're going to come across in Christ, we're going to highlight it. I've got these really cool highlighters. They're so good. They're Bible highlighters. They're really cool, right? So we're going to highlight them. And anytime it says in him, that's the number two. And by whom? Anytime we see those, those phrases, it's talking about you, Beth. <laughs> I'm joking. I was saying every time it says in Christ, in him, by whom, it's talking about Beth, it's talking about Kathy, it's talking about April. I'm saying this because I can see you on my screen at the minute, okay? <laughs> uh, it's talking about all of us. For instance, it says in Christ, I am a new creation. We are a new creation. That's in, in Christ. In Christ, we are redeemed, right? That's another example. Or Romans 5.2 that says, by whom we have access by faith. These are things that we have now. It's not something we're going to get. This is our present condition as it stands, okay? And we're going to underline those, as I said. Um, for instance, where it says, um, Romans 8.1, we all know this one. 
There's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. In, in Christ. There's a big message going on here. We're in Christ. That's the key to not have condemnation is that we're in Christ. Okay. So in Romans and in Corinthians, Paul was talking to a lot of people that were sanctified and set apart for God, but yet we're walking in very kind of like in on drinking milk. If you've heard that phrase, they were really struggling with their identity of, of what had actually happened to them. 